We're with Gary Morgan, who was a race walker in the Seoul Olympics in 1988, and he's made the most of it. He knows everybody who's here. <laughs> and we're going to be talking about day two of the U.S. track and field trials here in Eugene, Oregon. And wow, it was an exciting day. What was your favorite part? Um, the 10K definitely um, was a battle to finish for the women. Uh, I uh, started with a huge pack and kept on dwindling. Uh, and uh, as they picked up the speed a little bit, wasn't so much a bit of speed as uh, I believe uh, it got real warm out here. It was about this time. It was 11 o'clock. Uh, that field gets real warm real quick like. And it became an attrition race. But our two best uh, women took one and two. Uh, as the field kept dwindling down, Molly Huddle, who's been our best uh, distance runner uh, on the roads for the last year or two, was able to win. And Emily Infield, who uh, just nipped her at the World Championship, uh, finished just uh, three or four seconds back. So uh, then they had a new young lady come up, and, uh, you know, she had... There had been four people and then moved back down to three. So it was uh, it was an exciting race to watch. It was they, they just didn't pull away. It was uh, it was a hard fought race down to the end with the last three, and uh, it was an exciting thing to watch. I thought it was pretty exciting too. And Marielle Hall, who's the third one, will be going to Rio, and and uh, it was also fun to see how long that lead pack stuck together. It was really quite extraordinary. I thought. Yeah, they said there was upwards of 14 people, but they were not going that fast, you know, relative. But they kept picking up the pace over time. And then with the heat kicked in, after about 6, 7K, then it dwindled real quickly. But they kept picking up the pace, you know, a second a lap here and there, and then the heat kicked in. Definitely, I'm sure that last two couple kilometers took its toll on everybody out there. One of the people who hung with that lead pack for a very long time was a brand new U.S. citizen. Her name is, uh, I'm going to try to get this right, Elephine Tuliamuk, who uh, she lives in New Mexico, just recently became a U.S. citizen, and just recently won the 25K Riverbank Run. Yeah, she, uh, she definitely, that was the four of them, and she st hung on until with about a kilometer and a half left, so that had been about three laps. She finally faded from there. But up to that time, you know, and around that range, uh, there was four women pretty close. And then she finally fell off the pack and then faded quite a bit. But, it, uh, you know, she had a well-fought race there. And, uh, you know, her, she's got plenty of talent. We will see plenty more of her uh, in future road races and track races in the next few years. I think so. And... We also, in the women's discus throw, have three brand new people going to Rio. Uh, Whitney Ashley is number one. Well, uh, definitely um, in the throws, it's looking like uh, the stalwarts who've been around a decade are starting to lose their steam. But they're in their mid-30s. Mid uh, Stephanie Brown Trafton, which won the gold medal eight years ago, had um, always carried the flag for the U.S. and was kind of the standard bearer of the event. Uh, but uh, in the last few years, she's had some uh, problems with some things. And uh, it definitely, you know, it finally shows up at a big meet like this. And the younger people, no doubt about it, uh, you know, I've been coming to these for years, are very, very hungry. And you've been doing this for a decade or more. It's hard to keep that much motivation. And the body does slow down a tick here and there, whether we like to believe it or not. It's how it is, unless you're Michael Phelps. And uh, then you keep winning more races than you did ever. Well, swimming's easier on the knees, I think. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. But even that, it uh, you definitely it shows out there. Well... There, there were a couple of highlights, but the one that stood out for me, I just happened to be watching at the right time to see Brittany Reese set a new record for the Hayward Field for this particular meet. And she's basically, um, it, this was in the long jump, and she, she caught up to um, 
Jackie Joyner Kersey, who actually gave her her medal today. That was uh, yesterday. That was really cool. Well, yes, and uh, you know, I've watched Brittany uh, definitely at major championship. She has been consistent, you know, and uh, just a quiet athlete doesn't say much, doesn't you know, but she gets the job done. Uh, me year after year, she, you know, and she, I don't believe she, <laughs> she does a lot of meets. But when the big ones come up, world championship, national championship, she is there to defend her title. And she's right there consistently and uh, definitely going into Rio as the person for everybody to beat, looking at uh, winning another gold medal. There was some excitement yesterday in the decathlon. It was the first day of the decathlon. And what part of the excitement did you see, Gary? Well, uh, I was watching the 400-meter uh, run. And Ashton Eaton was a few points down, but he put his superior uh, speed on the line and ran a 46.29. And uh, one of the other guys, uh, Ziskel, I'm not sure if, how to pronounce his name. Double Z. Double Z is what they call And he was a few points ahead, but he does not have um, Ashton Eaton's speed. He ran 49 seconds, and all of his side. Ashton Eaton is now back at the leaderboard, and we'll see uh, where he finishes up today. I'm sure that uh, he's uh, looking to be on the team with no problem. Well, in the decathlon high jump, somebody whose name I'd never heard before, Jeremy Taiwo from the University of Washington, set a new decathlon record for the high jump. So that was pretty cool, too. What was that height he did in that? Uh, Seven something. Oh, seven something. Well, he'd be out in the open field on that. But uh, once again, uh, anything can happen. And of course, they'll be finishing up today. Uh, we had a, a Michigan uh, uh, grad out there, Steve uh, Bastine, who uh, interestingly came out of the uh, Ann Arbor Track Club youth program a decade uh, over the last decade. And now seeing him here at the Olympic trials, trying to make the Olympic team, just goes to show that. Uh, youth programs, whether it no, doesn't matter where, anywhere in the country, that um, 10 years of a youth program can turn uh, athletes into potential Olympians and Olympians uh, when it comes time, when their time comes in their 20s after going through a youth program for a decade. You know, that's pretty cool. Right now, uh, Steve is in eighth place, and right behind him in ninth is another Michigan athlete. Solomon Simmons from Eastern Michigan. I had a chance to talk to him yesterday. Yesterday, he's a, he's a pretty cool guy. He was saying, "Watch out for me in the hurdles," and sure enough, he uh, bettered his own PR in that. So, oh, good representation from Michigan in the decathlon. No doubt, uh, and those are a couple of fine young men. They have uh, come over and uh, helped us with the youth club with the kids who want to do uh, you know different field events. Uh, definitely uh, nice young men who uh, definitely want to give back to the community as uh, they are competing at a high level. When they have time, they uh, want to still be involved in the community. So hopefully they will do very well today, and I'm sure they will do very well in the future.